All right, well, I've been working on this electrical. Hopefully wrap this up today. God, I hope so. A good buddy of mine always says, take anything on a boat, times it by four. Anything you think is gonna take a certain amount of time or cost a certain amount of money, times that by four and you're probably correct, especially the time thing. So, as you know, we wanted to, you know, we were getting a little water in the aft old engine bay area and we got that all taken care of but because of that um, that forced us to go ahead and take care of that project that we had on the back burner for so long um, which was taking care of that old engine bay and getting the mess of wiring cleaned up and getting everything rewired and then put the battery up a little higher so that if we ever got any water in there again it wouldn't affect the battery or um, you know threaten to damage the batteries in any way so that was just good practice of course and uh, you know having them having batteries that low and electrical lines that low just is never a good idea um, unless you've got a dry build of course if we were gonna do all that then we might as well get everything done the way we initially intended which included rebuilding the nav station behind me that uh, had been torn out um, previously before we got the boat. So I ended up rebuilding the nav station and then started slowly getting all the wires pulled over, getting everything replaced that needed to be replaced, uh, especially connections, bad wiring, old wiring, pretty much redoing the entire thing. So one project ended up leading to another project that we had on the back burner. So what we thought was just going to take a couple days has now been a couple weeks. And thank God, just about done. Um, you know, we've got our panel pretty much done here. I'm just in the middle of hooking everything up. And then after we get everything hooked up, I gotta put a coat of epoxy on everything or a couple coats, I'll probably do three or four coats of epoxy. And then we'll get everything painted so that it matches the rest of the boat. We're gonna do it all in white. So that's the game plan. That's where we're at. Hopefully today I can get all this done and at least get the wiring buttoned up, cleaned up, everything hooked up. And then we can start moving on to finishing that old engine bay down there and getting that turned into storage and a good dry spot where I had put the old stuff up top originally when we just kind of moved in and needed a place to put it. I've got to get that bulkhead fixed and repaired. Um, we'll be putting the other um, stereo speaker up there as well as one of the fans. So still got quite a bit to do. I also got to get a place for this refrigerator to be put. But right now, we're just focused on electrical and getting the electrical done and back up and running. differently um, of course on this back side over here of the nav station um, I actually put the battery switch um, that way we've got a short run to the battery which is underneath there we go a short run to the battery there I got a mess of wires and, and lines behind me um, but I wanted for redundancy my point was back here on this side we went ahead and put in um, the battery switch over here on this side. And I needed a place to put the shunts for our battery monitors. And we went with two battery monitors. We have two of them in the bottom of the panel here. And I wanted two for redundancy. Of course, if one goes down, I always have the other one. I can also verify that they are reading correctly. And if either one of them's got an issue, we can address that at that time. But in order to do two battery monitors on the same battery bank, 
that's where things got a little tricky. It's not very common to do, but again, I was kind of surprised it wasn't very common because redundancy is so important on a boat. So I did, uh, what we ended up doing is, was back here on the backside where we put that. We've also put, installed our shunts on that wall on the inside and as well as the um, all the components for the battery monitor in order to do that and in order to make it redundant and use two battery monitors on a single battery bank what we had to do is basically hook up the shunts in series and by hooking up the shunts in series everything works the only difference and the only effect it'll make is your second shunt in line um, will be off just a little bit because that first shunt and battery monitor is going to take just a tiny bit of power. By doing it that way, that's the only downside to it, but we don't think it's a big downside because um, the amount of energy that we lose from one shunt to another is so minimal that we're not even gonna hardly notice it. So that's what we did to have, you know, the second solar panel. Um, that flexible panel, it's an additional 200 watts for the boat that makes 400 watts total. Um, rather than hook those two panels together, we're actually going to run two separate charge controllers, which again, for redundancy is a good thing. If one solar panel gets damaged or goes out or one charge controller gets damaged or goes out, we still have 200 watts of solar going to our batteries and charging everything. So ideally we have 400 watts total, but we'll run two charge controllers and that way we have a redundant system. When you run solar in series or parallel, um, you know, you, you start getting into things like, even if the solar panels match perfectly, which they should, and they're from the same brand and maker, which they should be if you're gonna do that, it works well, but if one part of that solar array gets shaded, it affects the entire array by having, you know, an on a sailboat, of course, and the location of ours on the front of our hardtop bimini for that second solar panel, we are going to have moments where the sail itself is shading that panel a little bit. So by running both panels separately to their own charge controller, what we essentially do is we don't lose all that energy when one panel gets shaded a little bit by a sail. We still have full power coming from our rear panel, which is behind our backstay and behind everything that could shade it. So that is the logic there. That's why we're doing it that way. Um, it doesn't affect anything. The charge controllers and, and BMS on the batteries, everything is smart and will work together just fine. Um, it's done all the time, and in fact, you can even mix and match charge controllers. It, it's not a good idea, and I'm not saying to do it, but however, if you have an MPPT charge controller and you have a PWM charge controller, you can still use those two to charge your same battery bank with two separate solar panels, and they'll work in, in, in conjunction with each other just fine. So that's our plan. I'm going to get back to work today, and... Hopefully you enjoy this video. I actually have hinges installed. I now have everything marked out. This actually goes on here like this. It closes and locks. And then of course we've got everything marked out for all of our panels. We'll be putting those on here in just a minute. And I also have this cabinet door just about done. We'll uh, take a look at that in just a second as I wrap that up. And I have my trim that I'm actually going to put on like this. If I can do this without breaking it, it's gonna be a miracle. And I'll be really happy. I know I can do it. I just don't know that I can do it on the first try. And we'll see if I can do this without breaking it. I'm gonna leave that little itty bitty piece right there on. Okay. Oh, 
Look at that. I don't know how I did that the first time, but it works. Let's see. Boom. Perfect. So, thank gosh that's done. I'm going to repaint all this when it's done. All right. Of course, we did this little notch here for right here. And then this end actually fits together like a puzzle piece as well. So I had to cut and notch everything here. And now she should fit right in there. And there we go. Since we're painting this white, this is okay because we can just fill these edges right here. And I didn't need a 45 since we're just doing paint rather than stain on all this wood and filling any little screw holes we have. And we're also putting a top on this. So um, a top similar to what we have on our other camera. Get the door built. It's gonna sit in there like this. That way it matches the rest of the cabinetry around everything. And uh, we'll be running a router around this edge to match the trim on the rest of the carpentry in the boat. I am using a non mortise hinge that'll actually hide this hinge back here so that's what we're going to be doing next all right well it's raining today but we are going to go ahead and get electrical hook or disconnected from here so that i can run the wires back down to the new nav station and get them shortened up cleaned up installed properly and then we will install the components for the nav station, the panels, bilge pump, battery monitors, all of that into um, the new nav station panel. I hate doing this on the boat, but like I said it's raining, so I'm going to have to cut on the boat, in the boat, and just clean up the mess as I go. Ouch. Putting everything in here for the new, the new uh, nav station. And we've got our new panel from Heogu on Amazon. We've partnered up with them. They've helped set us up with a secondary um, DC switch panel. Fused, of course. And um, we should be getting a, an AC panel as well. So we'll do a review on both of these when we're done. But wanted to give a shout out to them we will leave the links down below they have quite a few different boat products electronic products and stuff um so thanks again to them and uh a big shout out to them uh, for partnering up with sv kaya on this and uh we can definitely use this extra panel we needed this extra panel um, our first 12 volt panels got running lights, anchor lights, spreader lights, cabin lights, uh, wash down and instruments. And we needed to add a second panel for the stereo, the VHF and the fans. We'll have three fans in the boat and they all only run very small, about an amp at most. So we'll put those on their own circuit here as well. And that'll give us uh, at least three extras for any other expansion we do in the future. And we have most of our nav station set up. Still waiting on the AC panel, as well as we need to get a VHF installed here. And then this will be ready to go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and install it, though, without those two. We can put those in later. All right, I've now got the battery installed, as well as strapped down. And I'm redoing these cables. I'm using a pneumatic crimper. Uh, 
That's crimped on good. And I've got heat shrink and we'll be heat shrinking this. Building battery cables. Battery comes in here. Then goes from there into the other shunt. The other shunt is where everything hooks up at from here on. All right, so this is the piece I just cut. It matches our hole there. So this is gonna lay in here like this. hinge this so that it'll actually pull down and we'll have access to everything so hoping to wrap this up we'd like to get the boat out and maybe do a little sailing today so trying to get it wrapped up here this morning both on, both working, both reading correctly. Got the solar charge control plugged in, but not plugged into the panels yet. Everything's good, everything's plugged on, and build works under battery only, even if the batteries turn, are turned off. I'm only drawing 0 0.051 amps currently. And that's just uh, the result of this being on. So now I got to get it all buttoned up, get it epoxied, and get the rest of everything put together and get it painted. <laughs> you got to fix his hair first. We got the electrical hooked up, and at least we can get out a little bit. Nice if they'd come uh, hang out with us a bit. 